On today's episode, we're going to be talking about willingness, learning about how life reflects us. And on this episode, you get to meet our co-host. Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and I appreciate all of you being here. I'm Chris, your host and the founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. And actually, uh, if you're watching this on video, you will see that we have another uh, person sitting with us. Um, so I'm going to have to change my opening. I can't really be saying the host. Uh, we have a co-host with us. Uh, so Missy is joining us as co-host here on the program. And I will have her introduce herself in a second. This is part of the changes that I, I've been mentioning in the last few episodes that uh, as this podcast continues to grow, we're going to continue to add new features and really help this to be a podcast that not only can help you in everyday life, but um, you know, be one that's interactive for you and, and that you can helping the topics and helping uh, joining in. So uh, in that regard, we do have a Patreon page. And um, for those who are unfamiliar uh, with Patreon, that is a website where it can help all of us, you know, a little bit financially, a little bit of a gift, um, so that we can help bring this content to you. Any proceeds that you want to share with us on that website will go back into the podcast so that we can have uh, the best of equipments and do all the stuff that we need to do uh, to make this one of the best podcasts out there. And for your wonderful gift to us, there are different levels. So depending on what level you want to join us on, uh, you can get gifts yourself. So there is uh, merchandise and offers and all wonderful stuff. Go over to the Patreon page and give whatever you can give and we'll give you what we say we'll give you. Um, so go over to Patreon, search for On Finding Peace, or you can just click the link on the show notes page. So that's it for money. Um so let's, uh, without further ado, uh, learn who our co-host is, uh, the person that you'll be hearing from. And for those of you who are uh, watching this on video and, uh, you know, I ask you to join the uh, YouTube channel if you, if you do want to catch us on video. Uh, so joining us is Missy. And uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and what's going on and why you're joining us uh, here on this podcast. Well, I'm super excited to be here. Um, my name's Missy and I am the founder of the Phoenix program and Missy Ordway Life Coaching. And it just actually gives me an experience to, you know, spend time with you and energy and, and co-creating so we can uh, create new things for new people and give them new possibilities. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome that, you know, it's this ability to, you know, double up on, on what we're offering. Um, Absolutely. You know, as people who've listened to the podcast know, you know, my, my whole point is, is to help people to find their inner peace. And uh, that's not unlike what uh, Missy's doing in, in her ventures. And we're going to have her website and the Phoenix program and all on the show notes page. So, um, you know, encourage you to check out uh, what she's got going on. And, you know, even though we talk similar messages, we do have, you know, different approaches to it. And we're coming at the message from our own life experiences, which, you know, aren't the same. So, you know, hey, it, it's one of those things where the message might be the same, but, you know, one of us might be better to help somebody and the other one help somebody else. Who knows? Absolutely. Um, it's all about connecting and approach. 
Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, I have many, many clients that actually, you know, I work with for a little bit and sometimes I, I recognize that other coaches are better for them. So I don't mind at all, you know, su suggesting that they work with them and see how things go and, and um, you know, get the best of, of whatever they can get from anybody. Yep. And uh, in case somebody is just kind of listening, you know, and, and they're not looking at the show notes, um, what, what is your website? Uh, it's dot com. All right, perfect. So, uh, if if you can, uh, you know, get on line while you're listening to this, go ahead. Um, but like I say, you could just click the show notes um, over at uh, uh, my webpage or over at the uh, podcast of choice, whatever you're listening to this on, or YouTube. I'm trying to encourage people to go over YouTube as well. So yeah. uh, check us out over there. But uh, so, Missy, if you don't mind, just, you know, talk a, a bit about what is life coaching for you? And, you know, people have listened to this podcast before and they kind of heard my take on how I view life coaching and, you know, a little bit why I got into it. But what's what's uh, kind of your take on this whole life coaching thing? So I have been an empath my entire life, or have empathical abilities. I have the ability to feel what other people are are going through and and uh, actually point them in the direction so that they can recognize for themselves what what really is is going on with them. And uh, so it's really a gift. And when I'm in that mode, when I'm actually uh, I feel like I'm channeling, I don't know how to say it any better than that. It's like the message. If I'm not um, recording it, then I never remember what I say. And people will ask, hey, do you? And I'm like, I have to check in again, you know? So, um, so what it's kind just of message been, at the moment is, is what's happening. Yeah. You, I mean, really, it is, it is all about being in the moment with that person. And it's as if love is just flowing through me to that person so that they, they get the message that they need. And um, so I it just, it's a great experience for me. And the message is always just as much for me as it is for that person. So it's like, you always teach what you need to know best. And um, so it's just, uh, it's another avenue for me to learn. Yep. No, and, and, and that's awesome. And, you know, the, the, what I've seen in, in my work, you know, when, when you kind of touch a person in, in the sense of that they know that you get what they're saying on, on that deeper level, you know, that it's not just, you know, you're hearing words and you're repeating words or you're giving some advice, but but you really get, you know, yeah. what they're saying. That's, for me, one of the, the best feelings. And, and you can see it, you know, like, like you just tell them in their face that you, you got it. Well, you know, I know we're connected all the time. You know, we're connected all the time. And our physical senses tell us differently. But that connection, like it just, you can feel the energetic connection when you're with somebody working like that. And it, it is, you're absolutely right. It's just incredible. Yeah. So, and that, that could be, you know, a good topic down the road about connection and what connection <laughs> means. And, um, so yeah, the, uh, I think we're going to have to jot that one down. Yes, we um, will. <laughs> and uh, any listeners are interested in something like that. I mean, you know, let us know that that's something you would like to hear about, you know, is, that connection between, you know, all of us as, as humans and, um, you know, and for some of you who might be thinking like, oh no, this is the strangest thing in the world. And they're going down. The path. <laughs> There's no, I'm used we're to not. It. <laughs> I'm if used to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're thinking that, no, 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 that's not the path they're going down because, <laughs> you know, other famous scientists, psychologists like Jung, um, you know, who was early on in, in the field of psychology and very well respected in the science of, of psychology, yeah. um, talks the same thing of, of collective unconscious and, and the connectedness um, that we as humans have through the generations. So, no, we're, we're not going down any weird paths. So. No, no, we're, we're just, uh, you know, what resonates. When it resonates, you'll know. Yep. And uh, that, that, that resonates with me. You know, and it helps me to love other people, even when they're sometimes difficult to love. Yeah, all <laughs> we all there. have them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have all been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so 
Yeah, so I, I think we're, we're going to need to write that down for a, a nice topic uh, down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but speaking of topics, you know, the uh, what we're looking at is to talk about willingness um, and kind of, you know, reflecting back on us. Um, how, how do you uh, see that, Missy, about, you know, looking at this whole willingness uh, issue within ourselves? I think that... Uh you know, life reflects to us constantly, whether whether it's another human being or a situation or anything that we go through. And unless we're willing to look, then we're not going to see what really needs to be healed or worked on and, uh, you know, help us get to the next level in life. You know, where, where we're really striving to be, we're always more, better, different, right? <laughs> and uh, if, if we're not... Uh, taking a good look at what's happening in our, our current situation. It's, it's happening inside and we're projecting it and we need to heal that. And, and that's the willingness for me. So, you know, I, I've written about this and, you know, I, I've kind of been there too, you know, that you can say there's this willingness to do what I need to do, but you hold yourself back. Oh dude, it's so hard. <laughs> It is so hard. I mean, I, I can experience from my experience this week, even it's like, you know, being able to say, I really want this to change. It's like all your crap comes up. It comes up on the surface and you're like, oh, OK, well, this is I, I get to look at this. I get to see what what really wants to change, what needs to change in my life. And, uh, you know, that can be it can be very easy to want to stay in a comfortable place instead of challenging challenging yourself to to move forward and go you know what I, i've got this i can do this and and if i want a better life i want to be different then then i have to approach it that way so you know in, in my history i've done a lot with addiction and you know i think willingness speaks a lot to that you know topic you know of you know how much do they want to change their life and but what I found for a lot of people who are suffering from the addiction, and, and I think this is true just in, in life, you know, if you're suffering from, you know, depressions or anxiety or, you know, what's going on in your life, that there's a point that you realize I need to make a change and I'm not liking my life at the moment or liking me at the moment. Um, so I know I need to make the change, but, well, it is easier just to stay here. You know, I mean, it's even though I don't like being depressed right now or or I don't like using whatever, you know, chemical I'm using, but it, it's comfortable in the sense that I know it. Right. I, th I think that uh, when it comes to that, it's it's like, you know, victim accountable. Right. You know, so I can be accountable for what's going on and I can take the action to not accountable in the sense like I'm responsible, but like, you know, have the power to own this is what's going on right now. And there's a reason it's going on or be the victim. And, and, uh, and that's, it's easy to fall into that. I agree. I mean, you know, I have, uh, you know, let's say getting hurt, you know, oh, my back, I'm in pain. I'm, you know, and, and, and it's almost as if it's an excuse for us to not be, be, uh, like I can be grouchy when I'm in pain, you know, and that's my excuse is I'm in pain, but I'm being a victim really of that circumstance rather than saying, you know, um, okay, this is just a thing that's happening right now. You know, um, I probably shouldn't have threw the football so many times or, you know, done whatever I did, you know, so now I get to relax because life is telling me, okay, it's time for you to, to chill out a little bit. And we are such in the society of go, 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 do, 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 you know, and um, like, I think that life has that way of saying like, hey, you need a break and I'm just going to knock you on your butt until you take it. And then once you do, you're like, OK, now I can go back at it. Yeah. No, and I think life does do that. You know, it's I used to use that analogy with uh, people who are suffering from alcoholism that you know, as they were drinking, drinking, you know, they would say, well, yeah, eventually I'll pass out. And that was, you know, always annoying. Right. Well, sure. I wouldn't doubt that that's annoying, but that's your body's way of saying, you know, look, yeah. you've been putting so much stuff in, 
you know, mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, your body has had you feel ill, you know, maybe it's had you, you know, feeling other things to try to slow you down. But at some point, you know, I think it's just the body's way of saying, you know, enough's enough. And the only yeah. way you're going to stop putting this in is if I just shut you down for a bit. That's it. So, yeah, I can kind of see what you're saying, you know, we're, you know, we're, with life that way. And, you know, I, I think with us moving so quickly, what we've also gotten into the rut in general as a society and, and people may scream about this, but that's fine. Leave, but leave, leave comments. But we seem to be in a society where many people in the society don't want to take responsibility. You know, it, it's all about what everybody has done to me versus oh, yeah. well, what's my contribution. You know, why is it everybody else's fault for, you know, like everything happening to me, so to speak. And, and I wonder how you would see that as like affecting the willingness, because if I'm not going to take responsibility for my depression or for my addiction or whatever it is, well, well how do, why would I have a willingness to change? Because isn't it everybody else's problem? That's, that's when you get to love them exactly where they're at, you know, <laughs> they're on their path, wherever they are. But I, I agree. Have I described somebody? Is that the problem? <laughs> well, no, it, it's about, I mean, we, I think projection is, you know, when we think that it's the things outside of us are causing you to feel the way that you do on the inside. When, when I look at things differently and, you know, I think that probably a lot of your listeners probably have had some touch on when you have your thoughts, your thoughts predict where you're at. Because if you think of it like this, if you're in a great mood, things are wonderful. You're on top of the world and somebody cuts you off in traffic. You're like, it's okay. No big deal. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know but if I've ever done that, but okay. Like, <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I'm different, but, <laughs> but, but when you're in that, like, Oh, I had a bad day. It's long and you know, and hard and you're already in that funk in your head then, you know, everything sets you off. It doesn't matter, you know, but if you're in that good state of mind, nothing can set you off, you know? And um, I literally, I mean, I have to catch myself because like I, I can go down the rabbit hole <laughs> and I can look and then I'm like, ah, eh, that doesn't feel so great. I'm really just going to let that thought pass. But when I do that, it's, it's wonderful. But when, when I, just decide to dig a little deeper and see what's down there a little further. And then next thing you know, like I'm, I'm surrounded by darkness and I'm in a great, you know, I'm like in a horrible mood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I really think that our thoughts have everything to do with the way that we see the world and how we either accept and accept responsibility and have the willingness to look, or we decide to blame it on everybody else. And I don't see where blaming it on everybody else actually gives anybody any peace. You know, when, you know, my focus is always on, you know, how do you live a, a life of peace and happiness? And if you're always blaming somebody else, then somebody else is always controlling what's kind of going on with you. And I don't know. I mean, I imagine then that can't be a happy or peaceful place. No, you're giving your power away. I mean, like, we don't have control of very much and we are definitely meaning making machines. Something happens and we instantly want to make up the meaning. I mean, like you, you give anybody a trampoline and they will jump. I promise, you know, and yeah. th that's, that's just the way that we are as humans. But I feel like to me, that's an ego. Like that's ego saying you're separate from me. We're different. We're not the same. We don't have anything in common, you know, you have to be against me, you know, and, and we look at those as like people wronging us constantly, you know, rather than what could this teach me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm telling you, it's not always fun. I get it. Mm -hmm. It's not always fun, but it is always helpful. Like sit with the yucky stuff, sit with that yucky feeling, be okay with not being okay. And then, figure out what it's trying to teach you so that you can, you know, focus your energy there to work on it, to develop your skills, your, your me muscle memory um, on getting better. Yeah. And, and I think what that also leads us to is how do we, you know, try to put ourselves in, a, in another person's shoes, you know, that, 
just because we make an assumption about something or somebody doesn't mean that it's true, you know, and one of the things, you know, I mean, you mentioned, you know, with driving, I mean, that, that's one of my biggest peeves, you know, I mean, if you're going to like cut me off or do something stupid or. You know, oh, I tagged you, did I? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, no, see, I'm, I'm the perfect driver. It's everybody around me that. You know, I know, right? That, you know, so yeah, I, I've, I've hit the horn, you know, I, I've, you know, like kind of ruined my moment in, in the sense of, oh man, you could have created an accident, blah, blah, blah. And what if I wasn't paying attention? I think and then I got to remind myself, well, if I wasn't paying attention, then that's another problem, which is mine. Um, you know, but also looking at it from another person's perspective, because, you know, there was one time that I actually had to, you know, rush somewhere. I mean, actually, you know, to do something for, you know, to uh, help somebody out and all and legit had to speed down the road to do this. And of course I got to weave in and out of a few people and, you know, so you've got that one person who decides they're going to be the cop and they do that pull out in front of me and hit their brakes. Yeah. Or, so on purpose, you know, like, Oh, you shouldn't be speeding type deal. You're like, I'll teach you. But you know, on the one hand, all right, I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. But I really was rushing to an emergency. Right. So the fact that you're assuming I'm just being an idiot, you're assuming I'm just having this big ego and doing whatever, and you're going to be the savior of the road, you know, good on you. But the problem is you didn't realize I actually was going somewhere important. And the fact that you're going so slow could be a major issue. Oh, yeah. You know, now, does that overly justify that I was doing that? Probably not. But it was a legit reason. It wasn't just, you know, I'm hungry or I'm late for work because I got up late. Or get out of my way. I have road rage. <laughs> yeah, You know, it, it wasn't any of that. So, but I mean, what that kind of teaches me is, is through that frustration is I'm trying now, if somebody's going to cut me off, you know, first reaction needs to be, do they have to be somewhere? Right. You no, know, I mean, they might just be a jerk or they might actually have an emergency, you know, and, and who right. am I to judge why they just did what they did? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think we can all relate to, you know, a little bit of road rage. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I've experienced that lately, too. You pull up next to someone and, you know, like, OK, well, I'm either going to go because I need to get in front of you or you're going to stomp on the gas and I'm just going to wait. I'll just, I'll wait. I'll go behind you. No big deal. Um, and I think that that it, it's like, it's about winning, you know, it's, it's about winning sometimes for, for us. Um, they say we have a herd mentality, you know, we all stick together. We're driving down the road. We're in a pack, you know, until somebody goes like, Oh my gosh, I can't take it anymore. I've got to break free from the pack. And you know, if that, personally, if that happens, I'm like, oh, let me get out of your way because you're right. I don't know. And I would want somebody to get out of my way. Um, I think that we judge a lot. We judge each other a lot. We judge ourselves a lot. And I think something that has helped me was uh, one teacher taught me um, whenever you judge somebody to say just like me. So, yeah, OK, well, I don't like the way that person looks. They look just like me. Or, you know, I, I don't like the way that that person acts while well, they're acting just like me, because if you spot it, you got it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, that's the willingness, though. Like if I can see that somebody's being a pain in the you know what, then I'm probably somewhere in my life being that same way to somebody else. So I need to figure out where that is so I can stop being that way, because that person who is is tagging me won't tag me anymore if I stop doing it to the person I'm doing it to. Right. It's like, you know, that's how the energy goes. That's how, that's how life reflects to us. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's where, when we start looking at this willingness, you know, really what it needs to be, if we're going to have this willingness to change, it's probably important to be able to shift that perspective so that it's not just how life is, is reflecting on each of us, but you know, how is life reflecting myself to me through other people? Yeah. If that just made sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, that the you know I've I've got to see these in other people and then realize that I too have faults and therefore I need to make some changes if I'm asking somebody else to make changes. You know, um, I had a conversation with uh, a friend of mine, and uh, there was adamacy. You know, like I am not like this. I see this in this person. I'm not like this, and I can't make you. Like, I can't say you are or you aren't. I can't make you see that you are or you aren't. And you may not be. And, you know, maybe, I don't know how you are in, in the thought process of other lives or, or things of that. Maybe you were that way in another life and you're just, you know, kind of figuring it out this life. Who knows? But somewhere along the line, you get to work on that in this life, you know, and, and um, you know, it's it's not always easy to be willing, but I think that it's definitely beneficial to, you know, start to have that awareness. And, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. But the more that you kind of start to look at things and start to be curious and inquisitive about what's going on in your life and why it's happening, then then the more lessons that you'll learn and the better off you'll be. And, and that brings full circle into the living in the moment. Yeah, because everything you've just been saying, there's no way you're going to get that if you're focused on the past or, or the future, you know, but really focused on what's going on with me now. Yeah. You know, and, and the, the whole, you know, what, what's happening, what do I do different? How do I, you know, refocus, you know, because whether we're, you know, talking past or, or now, you know, the only thing I can do is now. So, you know, like you say, I mean, regardless of thought belief on whatever the point is we're here now yeah what are you gonna do with it that's it you know so yeah i think that that's very important because the only thing we can change besides us is us in the present moment that's it yeah that's great that's a great point um i think that it gives us the ability to be like you said, be in the present moment, sit with it, and then you don't have to dissect it. You know what I mean? You nope. can just go, oh, that's interesting. And I don't I don't need to focus my energy there anymore because it's a new moment. Yep. Well, it's like, you know, the example of the person cutting you off. You know, I mean, first response, yeah, you're going to get ticked off. You're going to get upset. You're going to do something. Um but see, if you sit in the moment for a second, you know, the, then you realize, well, let's look at it from their perspective. Let's look at it from my perspective in, in the sense of why am I so upset? Right. You know, I mean, yeah. nothing did happen. You know, I mean, OK, I can see a little upset if they actually did hit you or there was an accident or, you know, but assuming nothing. I mean, they, they just did it and they're moving on their way and you're upset that they did it. Yeah, maybe focus in on, well, why am I so upset about this? Yeah. You know, am I upset, like you were saying earlier, because they're winning and I'm not winning now because they just cut me off their way ahead of me? Right. You know, and, and if that's true, what's all that about? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that there's a lot that we could do, you know, in the moment to realize, hey, that this is a great life lesson. But at the same time, we can still feel the way we feel. I mean, I can still be upset. Absolutely. You I know, say it all the time. Be okay with not being okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I, I think where it changes is when I can be upset that they did that and I'm upset all throughout the rest of my day. Yeah. You know, like all I can talk about with coworkers or family, friends, whatever, is how this person cut me off and, you know, how I you, are. That is the hardest thing to do. It is so hard not to go do the, I mean, like, you know, get in the dumps with everybody because everybody has a story that they want to share about. Can you believe this? And it's so hard not to go, oh my gosh, that's horrible. That's terrible. It, it's, it's challenging because mm -hmm. we want to, we want to communicate. And that's sometimes where we feel like the connection is, well, well, look what happened to me, you know, and well, look what happened to me, and, you know? And so we're kind of tit for tat with that. Um, so, you know, sometimes you just can sit back and you're allowed to go, like, oh, that's interesting. Exactly. You know. And, you know, I, I just had this thought and it, it may be a very crazy thought and that's OK. Um, so, you know, it, it, as you say, I mean, if, if any of us, 
you know, listeners and all, if any of us go into, you know, workplace, public place, family, whatever, and start complaining about a driver, somebody cut me off, somebody break checked me, you know, whatever it is. You're right. I bet you you're going to get a whole group of people around you who are going to start commiserating with you because they're like, oh, no, that that's not like my story. You know, my story. Is yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody's going to now start, you know, see, I got to win again. Everyone's going to be, you know, I win because I got the best story about some, you know, idiot down on the highway. Well, I wonder and here's my weird thought. I wonder if we challenged ourselves that after hearing this episode, you go into work and share a story where you were like the happiest or the most at peace with yourself. Oh, that's awesome. I love that idea. Flip it around. Now, yeah. how many people are going to join you in on that? You know, I, I hope for it. I hope for it and I pray for it all the time because, you know, that's that's where we should be. We should be lifting yep. each other up. We should be holding each other high and celebrating each other's wins. And we don't do that enough. I really, yep. truly believe that. I mean, we have celebrations in our own lives that we don't stop and go like, wow, today was a great day. Or I recognize that I didn't do what I would normally do and, and I'm getting better at that. So that's wonderful. That's a win for me. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that that's a challenge. You know, can can we, you know, challenge the listeners? Um, I, mean, I guess we've challenged them to put up with co-hosts and we'll see how that is. But <laughs> let's challenge them that, you know, they need to go into work and do something good. You know, say something about the positive. Because the realist in me is saying, eh, no one's going to come around you. You, know, you got you got to talk about you know the the idiot driver and they're all going to come around you commiserate but you start saying about yeah hey this was this great thing that I did and I I, I don't know I mean maybe I'm just being too cynical but I, I'm not seeing the same thing happen but what more and more people start doing it oh it, it could know. change the entire atmosphere of of the workplace you know. Um, you know, that's, we want people to lean on. We want people to be there for us when we're having a bad day. But at the same time, like, you know, we want people to be there to celebrate with us too. And, and sometimes that's even more difficult to share because you, you look like you're boasting or you're bragging, mm -hmm. or, you know, and, and then, you know, you got people turning their nose up at you. So, I mean, gosh, you don't have any idea how excited I was. I was like, I get to be on podcasts. I'm so excited, right? Because I've never done it before. And and it's super exciting to share. Mm -hmm. And some people don't share in your excitement, but that's okay. It didn't dim my my light, you know what I mean? But but at the same time, I, I agree. I think that it could be a, a totally different, you know, atmosphere for them to be able to share those kind of things. So I think that's a great challenge. Well, the challenge is out there and uh, let, let's see, you know, go, go into work or into a crowd or, you know, your family, friends, whatever. And, you know, let, let's share something like that where you, you're totally happy or in peace or whatever positive thing in, you know, the opposite of what you would do with, with the car. And, and let's see what people do with it. And, Absolutely. And, yeah, I, I think tell us about it. we would love to hear about our the experiment that you put on for yourself. Exactly. So if you're going to do it, or I should say when you're going to do it. Yes. Then you need to come and make a comment. So either comment on, you know, the podcast uh, site that you're on or comment on the website, social media, uh, wherever, you know, click the links for my website, and Missy's website and find all the places you can comment and say, here's what I did. And here's the response. And yeah. even if everybody stared at you like you're crazy, yeah, <laughs> I would say you look around at all of them, you give them a little smile, and you go, whatever you need to do at work, and you can tell us that's what happened. Hey, and Chris and I are going to celebrate you. There so you don't go. worry. We're going to celebrate you. <laughs> there you go. See? And then we can get on here and say, hey, so-and-so just reported that they did this, and everybody ignored them and thought they were crazy. So we will celebrate in that, that everybody missed a moment. That's right. And maybe you should do it again. And maybe you'll get a different response. Yeah, absolutely. Or they'll think you're crazy again and like, well, so what? Try different people. <laughs> Try different people, not the same people. <laughs> 
True. <laughs> or random people in public and you know. Yeah, that's yeah. always fun too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you know, let us know and you know, I mean, hey, video it. Send us in some videos of you doing it and let, let's see what the crowd does. And you know, we'll we'll have to find out. Maybe there's areas of, of this country and world and whatever that do it more than others. So it's like know. reporting the good news. You know, That's it. We want it. We all want to hear the good news. It's you, just, you prove me you know. wrong. I, I, I want people out there to prove Let's me prove wrong. Prove Chris wrong. Let's do it. <laughs> that, that if you go out there and share something positive like that, people will rally around you and try to outdo you in their positive story and prove me wrong on that. And, and that'll be awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll have to come up with some challenge that I'd have to do if I'm proven wrong, but I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, that's totally wild here. It's, you know, cool. I like it. Yeah. That's a good challenge. That's a good idea. Yeah. Just pop in my head. Perfect. People are going to think we scripted that. Yeah, we didn't script it. I no, it totally that. was out of the blue. I love it, though. So that's, that's totally what co creating is all about. Totally popped in. Yeah. All right. So hopefully, all of you have not only enjoyed the topic and what we're talking about, but hopefully enjoyed the format. And, uh, you know, in all seriousness, you know, go to, uh, you know, anywhere that you find, uh, uh, find us on our websites or podcasts and, you know, leave a note about uh, what you like, what you'd like to see different. Um, and because uh, we really want to make this all about what's good for you and, uh, you know, finding your own inner peace and, and happiness in life. So. Definitely let us know that, and uh, the Patreon page is there just waiting for you with all of its goodies and gifts and, and things like that. Any parting words for today? Just be willing to look. You know, you don't. things aren't always going to jump out at you right away, but if you're willing to look, then you have the opportunity to continue changing, growing, and... Uh, I promise it will bring more joy, peace, happiness, acceptance, love, abundance, all the good things that we're all after in life. Awesome. Totally agree. All right. Thank you for listening. Spread the word. And uh, I hope everybody has a very mindful day.